Good morning. Or good afternoon, rather. I will try and summarize the scientific background behind GTDs. I work in RAMS together with Professor Florence Fontaine. We are at the very heart of the Champagne Ardennes area. In July this year, we will have the 10th workshop on grapevine trunk diseases. Let's first of all introduce the concept of GTDs. The grapevine trunk diseases are fungal diseases caused by pathogens, which taxonomically speaking are very different, but which all share the feature of attacking and colonizing uh, the uh, uh, trunk of the vines. Um, some are, have been known for a long time, including ESCA. They so were specifically linked, or they were specifically linked to pathologies of uh, vines at the end of their productive cycle. Then, new diseases came into the picture, and uh, that extended to vineyards uh, that had been recently planted. What are these diseases? In the project, we specifically focus on ESCA with all its uh, uh, form. So we have Botryosphaeria dieback or black dead arm. We have the Petri disease as well. We have uh, Eutypia dieback. And in this slide, you see the symptoms uh, which refer to both the aspect of the plant and symptoms uh, uh, which affect uh, the tissues of the plant. Why are they important? Because uh, this has consequences in the vineyard, in analogy for the production of uh, uh, table wine as well. And uh, in the vineyard, we have lost production, we have plant death, and we have uh, increased the reimplantation costs in analogy. We have effects for quality, the quality for table grape. There is a depreciation of the product due to the presence of ESCA. And in nurseries, you can also have uh, problems uh, due to the fact that uh, these diseases weaken uh, the plant. Uh, they are difficult to sell, and you even have grafting problems. Uh, you have an economic impact, therefore, that we mention here in France alone in 2016. We have one billion losses in, in euro. Their diffusion is uniform um, in all the vine growing areas in Europe. Of course, intensity varies. If you, for instance, uh, consider uh, the overseas situation, again, you find a widespread phenomenon and problem. So it is a common problem. Many grapevine diseases are easy to manage in phytosanitary terms. I refer to downy mildew, powdery mildew, and botrytis, but this does not go for GTDs. We will see why. Well, differently from the other diseases, these diseases have a, a multiple etiology, which means, as is the case with downy mildew, that we have the interaction of three factors, the pathogen, the host plant, and the environment. And then you consider evolution over time, and we know that there is a development of the situation and of the disease so that uh, due to, to, to the course of the disease itself, we can identify what is the disease. But that is not valid for GTDs. You have several pathogens on the same host plant. They can act simultaneously or one after the other. And the, the, the symptoms that uh, derive from that are chaotic, which means that, that uh, if you simply base everything on external symptoms in order to make your diagnosis, you will have many difficulties. Let's see why. Eutypia dieback 
due to uh, leaf symptoms uh, is more easy is easier to identify and to diagnose but uh, in the other cases we have a convergence of symptoms they do overlap so that each and every disease can either be asymptomatic or have leaf uh, symptoms as is the case with SK or it can have uh, severe uh, cases uh, uh, such as uh, uh, the cases that you see there and also the blast cases and others uh, um, different from apoplexy. And in some cases, symptoms are not useful at all. And then you have also the problem of uh, the discontinuity of symptoms. In ESCA, for instance, you we know that one year you might have the symptoms and not so the following year, which means that you underestimate the incidence of the disease on the field, which means that you have to have an observation for two, three years in order to have a clear picture of the incidence in real terms of the disease. Another reason why these diseases are dangerous for the uh, vineyard relates uh, to the management techniques including pruning pruning there you have the life cycle of uh, um, the fungi which cause uh, esca you see that pruning wounds are the key uh, channel of infection so to say and uh, in addition to that pruning wounds uh, uh, are also susceptible to infection by pathogens uh, throughout the winter for several months, uh, which is the time when the spores of pathogens uh, are there in the vineyard. In addition to that, uh, there are no active uh, uh, chemical or biological ingredients that can effectively fight uh, the disease. And I think that one good example is sodium arsenide, which we all know it was forbidden due to ne negative impact on human health and also the environment and this is one of the reasons why these diseases became more virulent the first step to solve the problem was that of investigating and examining and studying the diseases and here you see an increase in the publications about uh, GTDs uh, there have been major increases in the past years and especially uh, many countries produced uh, these works we have France uh, but also Croatia Peru and Oman so it is a widespread problem this research involved several things uh, epidemiology the interaction between the plant and bath pathogen and it can be uh, at physiological morphological metabol metabolomic and genetic levels uh, studies have been made about possible biological and chemical control and also studies about alternative vineyard management techniques were performed uh, and also nurseries uh, were examined so after 15 years we know more about the pathogens uh, that cause uh, the disease as you see uh, between 2000 and 2004 the number of pathogens associated uh, has increased and increased this is work in progress of course and data is constantly updated we know what reactions the plant has in order to try and defend itself against the infection we talk at, about morphological and gene expression uh, uh, aspects So given this uh, situation and scheme of knowledge, uh, the next step was that of establishing a network among researchers all over the world. And uh, there were several steps in that. First, the International Council of Grapevine Trunk Diseases was set up. The 10th edition will be in Roms. Then the next step was a creation of a cost action, which, as Fanny said, is the only one that actually was approved uh, for our sector and then the wine network project that you already heard about now i will address you on the results uh, that the scientific group uh, produced uh, with reference to the gtd here you have of uh, the participants uh, 
you see that we have university professors coming from various uh, uh, European countries. Our group uh, decided to especially focus uh, on uh, um, scientific uh, research uh, results about early detection of GTD pathogens, chemical compounds, uh, and uh, biocontrol agents. Uh, and then uh, trials uh, which tend uh, and try to limit uh, the uh, symptoms uh, uh, of uh, GTDs, uh, and it is leaf symptoms uh, that have uh, a major impact on, uh, on everything. And then uh, the pruning wound protection has also been uh, reviewed. That is what is now done uh, to protect uh, vineyard uh, pruning wound protection. Then vineyard management uh, has been another topic. And as I told you, nursery management. Let's go directly to the results. Early diagnosis. Well, we saw that it is possible to identify diseases using various methods. Uh, the, the traditional one with isolation on petri dishes, uh, and uh, especially molecular analysis, which are based on the recognition of the DNA of the pathogen in the tissues of the infected plant. As a matter of fact, early diagnosis uh, could be specifically useful in nursery nurseries, because that would uh, prevent uh, introducing into the supply chain, so to say, infected planting material. And uh, it is less important in vineyards uh, because it has been seen that, with reference to several fungi, including Botrospheria, you have uh, pathogens also on secondary hosts, uh, which means that you might have in, uh, uh, healthy plants uh, that you take at the nursery, but then uh, anyway, you have the problems in the vineyard. Uh, and uh, uh, it is not worth it trying to see whether the pathogen is present, uh, you s have to go for defense measures instead. It is also true that nurseries are not obliged to certify that plants uh, are free of GTDs. Only viroses uh, have to be certified. Studies evidence that there is no, uh, uh, it is not a certain correlation uh, for sure, uh, between uh, uh, the presence of the pathogen on the vine and the onset of the disease. One of the products uh, of uh, the, the research work is Microray, which is about to be completed, and which created a protocol for analysis whereby in the very same sample of uh, wood sample, you can identify up to uh, as many as 11 pathogens which are associated with uh, GTDs. And uh, uh, this is still um, under validation. Chemicals. Well, there are research focused on so many chemical products due to the fact that, uh, especially for uh, sodium arsenide, it was not know, uh, known uh, which mechanism intervened uh, in sodium arsenide against ESCA. So uh, this uh, test included all possible chemical substances, as you see. And the table that you see there gives you the most promising results, uh, especially in relation to uh, pruning wound uh, protection, which is one of the solutions uh, that we can uh, suggest now in order to avoid uh, and th that uh, the disease uh, um, is spread. And uh, we have also natural substances uh, such as garlic extract uh, or this um, mix of uh, chitosan and garlic and vanillin which uh, seems uh, to yield wonderful results in terms especially of uh, uh, pro wound protection, and uh, then uh, uh, also carbenoin and benazil were put there because uh, they uh, have been taken as a reference for a long time, even though they no longer are usable. What are the problems which are especially linked uh, to all these aspects? Uh, well, first of all, it is difficult to be able to say whether a chemical is uh, effective or not. B 
because symptoms are discontinuous. And so you have to continue testing for three, four years. And it is not so that this is always possible due to uh, the, the cost of it. And then uh, many substances were tested, especially triazoles. But we also saw that uh, there are several inorganic uh, products uh, and so-called natural compounds, they were also tested with good results, which is comforting, especially for those who want to do organic farming and then and vine growing. And then uh, I would like uh, to mention thiophanate methyl, which is a, which is akin to benomyl and carbetsapine. The uh, Control the um, BCAs uh, are depicted here, and trichoderma has the lion's share. It is highly versatile, and also in farming, trichoderma proves to be efficient and effective, especially when used in order to protect uh, the wounds, but in nursery, but also in nurseries, and. Uh, Using an organic product, uh, of course, entails uh, that you have a very thorough knowledge of things and capability of managing a living uh, being as trichoderma is. So, of course, uh, you have uh, to be able to use the products. If that happens, then trichoderma-based products can make up for the limitations of chemical products. That is, the uh, small spectrum of action, since uh, um, we have a whole series of families of fungi that cause the GTDs, and then the low and short coverage uh, rate uh, of uh, of these substances. You have to repeat the treatment normally after 15 days uh, using a bio an organic product, a biologic product such as uh, trichoderma. You don't have that problem unless uh, you have uh, uh, atmospheric events uh, which uh, cause a runoff of the product. And then uh, there are other studies uh, that evidence to good potentials. With reference to vineyard management, several studies were performed both in order to assess saying whether there are interactions uh, between uh, the management of uh, the um, training system and different types of pruning, which can be manual, which can be mechanical, and which can also be zero pruning or minimal pruning as an alternative. And uh, studies were performed to see whether there were differences in uh, the sensitivity of, uh, uh, to the diseases in relation to early or late pruning. And also the management uh, of uh, the um, vineyard in terms uh, of uh, the management of pruning debris was assessed. We saw that uh, there are differences in terms uh, of uh, internal symptoms and expressions uh, of uh, foliar symptoms uh, in relation to guyo uh, prunings, where you have more necrosis in the wood and less symptoms expressions in the leaves. And uh, the opposite is true in uh, the cordon uh, training. The different forms uh, for pruning seem not to have, sorry, do not seem to have uh, uh, an impact uh, uh, on uh, the presence of pathogens. Uh, so you find always the same pathogens, uh, irrespective of the pruning, which means uh, that apparently the type of pruning does not uh, change the composition or presence of pathogens. And then with reference to early or late pruning, on the other hand, the scientific committee remarked that depending on the area, and that permitting, it is better to prune in dry periods uh, due to the possibility of infection on the part of spores. Uh, so, but again, much depends on the area. It might be that in your area, late pruning is better. With reference to pruning debris, we saw that um, in the case of a deseriata, which causes uh, um, uh, the dieback, these uh, spores are vital for as long as uh, three years uh, on pruning debris, which means uh, that uh, one suggestion coming from the scientific board is to manage uh, the pruning debris so that uh, 
um, they are taken away from the vineyard and they are used for composting because temperatures when composting will neutralize uh, the uh, present pathogens. Finally, we talk about the management of uh, the nursery and several uh, studies were performed uh, in order to identify the criticalities uh, in uh, nursery management. And we saw especially that a number of operations that are not performed by all nurseries, of course, because each and every nursery has its own production scheme. And this uh, was a general scheme uh, which included all possible operations, um, uh, entailed, for instance, uh, hydration, which is something that happens uh, bef bef before grafting. If uh, hydration is uh, not done properly, uh, this uh, can lead to cross-contamination, which means uh, that uh, you have uh, contamination from infected to healthy material. Uh, obviously, we can uh, and must underline that, especially at nurseries, everything must be absolutely hygienic. And uh, one of the things we recommend is, uh, in terms of mother plants, uh, to uh, renew them and uh, keep them uh, suspended uh, from ground and renew the plants every 10 to 15 years so as to avoid that uh, they can uh, um, cannot accumulate a quantity of inoculum uh, that can then be transferred to the nursery. And in the nursery too, in the mother fields, uh, we suggest uh, going for a good wound, uh, wound uh, protection and disinfect uh, uh, in the production cycle all uh, the pieces of equipment which are used uh, for our work, disinfecting all containers which are used if hydration is done at the nursery. And uh, we uh, also suggest uh, uh, having the new plant uh, root uh, in uh, plots uh, in order to avoid uh, additional uh, infections. Black root, uh, black foot uh, is uh, a disease that otherwise can be spread in this way. And uh, some practices are controversial, um, including hydration and especially hot water treatment, uh, which is already used for Flavescence Doré, and which, uh, um, if possibly uh, ma properly managed, can give good results also with the GTDs. But the problem is that if it is not properly managed, that increases the number of known commercial plants. So many nurseries are skeptical against using this technique. If it is used, it is better to do this treatment at the end of the production cycle so as to guarantee a better commerciality uh, of uh, um, and sellability of the plant. Of course, uh, you can also uh, use a number of chemicals and studies uh, um, evidence that kinosol which is commonly used actually in the lab did not limit the growth of uh, pathogens uh, responsible for uh, GTDs, while other chemicals uh, um, perform properly. And then also trichoderma-based uh, uh, products can be helpful, especially during hydration in order to avoid contamination, especially uh, when ro during rooting, uh, obtaining a healthy plant uh, that can withstand the stress and which can exploit the positive uh, relationship between the plant and trichoderma, which uh, seems uh, to um, improve the situation. To conclude, if we consider the management of the nursery on the one hand, and of the vineyard on the other, and do a number of simple operations, we know that if we have good nursery management, that that is not followed by a good vineyard management, then we will have GTDs in the same way. If we have bad, bad nursery management and then good vineyard management, that is 
not sufficient to prevent GTDs. So we might have good practices in the vineyard, uh, but uh, these practices were not followed in the nursery. So the only winning strategy is to have good practices at the nursery and also good practices in, vine in the vineyard. The graphs I'm showing to you are, the, are testifying to what I have said so far. And this specifically, it is an economic case that performed in California about the positive uh, action or prophylactic actions uh, in the vineyard if they are deployed at the beginning of uh, the planting itself of the vineyard. This graph shows the productivity of vineyards which are healthy which started prophylaxis after three years from planting, five years, 10 years, and no action vineyards. As you see, the infected vineyard after 15 years does not produce anything more, while production remains high and close to the healthy vineyard if prophylaxis starts early. At the same time, the second graph shows the percentage of uh, pathogens uh, when prophylaxis is done at three years, five years, 10 years, uh, or no action. And again, also in this case, uh, the percentage of plants uh, or infection that we detected in the vineyard uh, was minimum um, uh, when compared to the vineyard where no action of protection was performed. And here, of course, we can't speak of efficacy at 100%, but 75%. I hope I did uh, not uh, speak uh, um, at length, and I thank you very much for your attention.